Since you mentioned uh, Babel, maybe I, I, I can comment there because uh, I, I think uh, the, uh, of course this idea comes from Walter Kerr that uh, usually Babel is thought of as a punishment for the arrogance of human beings. But uh, Ricoeur takes a more benevolent view of Babel. He says that actually the original situation is plurality of cultures, plurality of languages, and that's the starting point because in the Judaic vision, uh, separation is never a punishment. So uh, it's from this plurality, because of this plurality, one way of perhaps getting communication is through translation, and therefore translation is not necessarily equivalence, it's not a logic of equivalence, but it's always a kind of a interpretation which whereby you lose something and you gain something. So I think uh, what is put into question here is the American vision of translation as assimilation. Not necessarily, I think, translation does not need to be uh, assimilation, uh, because precisely that's the irony, because if you're all interested in assimilation, then you really never understand the other as other, and that's why <laughs> the other is still able to subvert you. So I, I think the, it's a kind of a mediation whereby I think uh, there's a myth here of a perfect translation. There's no such thing as a perfect translation. Translation, I think, will always be very approximative, and therefore, uh, that's why translation will go on because, uh, and therefore, uh, I, I think what, what what perhaps the Americans should do is, I guess, to undergo the, the what they call the, the the test of the foreign. In other words, they really have to let go so that they can understand really the other, and maybe that can change them. But if they're only interested in going out in order to protect their own security, that is actually contrary to their own uh, security. So maybe this idea of translation as a mediation, in other words, uh, you, uh, I think here he uses Freud, uh, there is a loss, there's a loss, in, in other words, uh, you must mourn when you translate, the original gets, loses a meaning, but in the losing of a meaning, something also out. So I think this one one remark. And then the second would be I I, I I think like in the translation of the Chinese classics and Indian classics, when the West went out to the East, they had this superior attitude because they always translated the Chinese terms into their own categories. And therefore I think there's a mistake there. You you're actually consuming the other and so you think that by translating you have already appropriated the other words. I think that is a naive thing. The whole question of translation and money in fact is uh, what my, my book is all about, but promising So it, 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 I didn't have to read the curriculum. So I don't think, but, but I did have to read it. But yeah, so I agree with you completely that the whole the question of translation for that's a question of loss, what are you using in the process of translating? And, and what is it you're gaining? And whether what is your gaining ever compensates for what is your use? So there's always an economic aspect of translation, just as there's always a dramatic aspect, a pathetic aspect of translation that requires this work of learning to continue, right? Uh, accent, of course, on the question of work, that it's, it's a slavery in the, 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 the translation. And so, the second thing, uh, about the question of mediation, uh, translation as mediation is always there, uh, even in the American, even in the most, even in the most crude versions of American ideas about translation, such as in, in, the, in the pronouncements of George Bush, which I cited for the paper uh, the, the thing that I want to emphasize, though, is the translation not only is mediation, but it also uh, uh, puts forth the possibility of failure the, the translation works in the sense that, in fact, it does mediate. Uh, it does mediate meaning. It does allow for the transfer of attention to take it on. It allows for understanding. But it also raises the pro pro possibility of, of, of the failure of mediation. Right? That is to say, the failure of understanding. 
Uh, and then the question becomes, is that failure something that comes after the work of translation? Or is that failure of mediation, in fact, the very basis upon which mediation in all future religions can be built? Right? It's like the chicken and the egg question, right? What, what comes first, translatability or untranslatability? Is it the emergence of sameness or the persistence of difference, which then guarantees future attempts at arriving at sameness, right? So that's why it's not hermeneutic. My understanding of translation is it is, is hermeneutic only in a modulated sense. But that I think hermeneutics, like dialectics, has a certain limit. Right? So I'm interested in what are the limits of hermeneutics? What is it, what are the conditions of possibility for hermeneutic translation to uh, take place at all? Right? Which is the failure of hermeneutics uh, to, to restart the computer, the failure of dialectics. That, that, I'm, so, I'm sorry this is a little too philosophical now. Okay, being almost as a philosophy. <laughs> but uh, these, are, these are some of the sort of the philosophical preoccupations we have in this. Uh, so, to your, uh, just to finish off, to your record, I'll post my very last. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think the, isn't the, the translatability and untranslatability, isn't it part of these two no, no, in fact, in fact, one, predicate, one is predicated on the other. It's a relationship with predication, not a relationship with predication. So, so far, we, we discussed translation from one language to another. And also within the same language. Within the same language. So, for example, even in English, you can have different, well, you can have different translations, so you can have different interpretations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, becomes a complicating factor when the translation relates to well, translating from one language to another. But even within one language, we are already not exactly. No, in fact, in fact, I would, I would go even more. Uh, I mean, the, the, the strong version of this theory is to say that every attempt to speak is already a translation. Yes. yes. So translation does not come after speech. It in fact presupposes the possibility of speaking. Now, because when you speak, you need to reorganize your thoughts into something for you. Right? You need to submit to a grammatical and syntactical structure. Right? So you're already playing out a work, you're already working as a point. There's already labor going on. The labor of repression. There's already a labor of repression that allows for one thing to emerge rather than another thing. Now, a situation where that doesn't occur is if you're schizophrenic. If you're schizophrenic, then you know, then there's no work of repression, there's no work of translation, but there's also no work of mediation. No work. Something is communicated, and what's communicated is uh, the impossibility of 